Sex and happiness both enrich our lives, yet it's surprising how few people can honestly say that they enjoy regular and fulfilling sex or describe themselves and their lives as happy. Host Lori Handlers helps you to experience real intimacy and happiness. You'll laugh a little, learn a little, and we hope put a smile on your face and a smile in your life. Now here's Lori. Hi, everybody. I'm Lori Handlers, and today I am joined by Michael Gibson and Lance Cole, and we are talking about, oh, first of all, we're in the Lori Handlers Academy for Men, and we're on the Tribal Fire podcast and sex and happiness god there's so many that's like <laughs> peter piper picked a pack of <laughs> so okay there's a lot of tongue twisting anyway today we're talking about pressure sovereignty and safety and these are things that come up in the world of sacred sexuality mm. all the time it comes up in the world of hashtag me too it comes up in our world, let's just say, it comes up in our world, and it comes up whether you know it or not. So my preamble to this is to just say, consider when you're about to have sex with somebody or be intimate with somebody without sex, but some way of being intimate, there could be pressure in the other person, and you don't know it. There could be pressure in you, and you're not saying and neither of you are feeling sovereign, and nobody's feeling safe. And that's what we're going to talk about on this show. And on top of that, I think what, what, what will really be beneficial to everybody is that we'll give you a technique to be able to dispel all of it. So that's exciting. That's very exciting. That's very exciting. All right. So, yes. Hi, Lance, everybody. You said. Uh, what's happening? <laughs> Do you feel Woo-hoo. pressure? I feel pressure. <laughs> well, the camera's on you now, the so on me. Oh yeah. My gosh. Um, yeah. No, I don't feel pressure. No. But I just you were, want to say hello. In our last show, you were talking yeah. about someone that you connected with at mm-hmm. a at a really um, level two Esther workshop. Is a yeah. super deep dive into what it is to be alive. Yes. And. And what it would be like to not be alive, and then what it would be like to rejoice in being alive again. Mm-hmm. And you met someone who said to you that she felt pressured. She always, she said, yeah. if I think I'm quoting right, why do I always feel pressured to have sex with someone? Yeah. yeah. Like that? Yeah, that's it. Yep. She always feels pressure to have sex with somebody, and she didn't want to. She didn't want to feel that anymore. You know, it's not that she didn't want to engage or didn't want to have sex. It's just that she didn't want to feel that way anymore. And it's like, so bringing in, so I just, I just held space for it. I held space for what was up for her. And I kept asking for clarity. What does that mean? What does that feel like? Where is it in your body? All those different things. Well, help, it, help us real quick. Let's, let's reframe this because I think it's really important for those who are listening. Maybe they didn't listen last time. Yeah. Um, but what I'd like you to do is just go ahead and take a moment and kind of um, set the scene, what happened, what, what was going on, and what, what she actually said to you. It was a, well, it was a divine union okay. exercise. Um, and so it was representing the divine, the, you were acting out divine union, whatever that looked like to you. Well, divine union usually means Shakti, right, the Shiva, yeah. uh, the goddess and the god, in a transpersonal way, not a personal way, like not you, Lance, and her, whoever she was, yeah. but you two acting as divine beings, being in some form of union, maybe copulation, maybe not copulation, but sitting together, breathing together, right. being intimate. Being intimate. Mm. And yes, that's exactly right. Mm-hmm. That's what the exercise was. And that's what happened. That's what came up, what I described. Yep. It was just, it was the... There was people in the room and they were engaging. There was people who were talking. There was all different sorts of things going on in the room around us. And she just expressed that. We did the bubble, the desires, fears, and boundaries. Right. And then we entered into that safe space with each other. And I asked her what was present. And that's what she said. She said... She, she said uh, the pressure to engage. Right. Why do I always feel why pressure? Do I always why do I always feel, feel pressure, pressure to engage? I don't want to feel the pressure to engage. Um, like being here with a man or being here in this space yep. creates that I have to do something about it. Like I have to be here and I have to, I have to give something or 
Right. Yeah, like give. I took it as she feels like she's giving something up and doesn't right. want to. So she wants to be in choice. That that makes sense. And and to add to that, just just slightly, that is exactly what Lori was talking about when she yes. mentioned, you know, women sometimes don't want to go on a date with a guy to dinner or something like that, where he he's going to he's going to spend you know money. Yeah, and that she feels pressure because. Now she feels like she owes him something. Mm-hmm. And so that's interesting to me because, you know, and I don't know how many men have it that, you know, hey, I'm buying you dinner. You better put out like I, I don't know how many men are like that. But the pressure is still there, whether they whether men show up with that intention or not. Yeah. Right. It's like it's always there. I can speak from past experience mm-hmm. just for myself. I had that. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Like you were paying for something. Yeah. And so she was going to. Especially when I was in the club business and I had a bar. Mm-hmm. You drank for free all night. <laughs> you going home with me. <laughs> you for, yeah, you, break, you drank you know, for free all night. I say it and my stomach goes, oh, you're gross. Like, right. you know, I'm judging myself right now, which is justifiable shame, right? Uh, yeah. But at the same time, that was a reality for you. And that's, that's kind of. where I was at. Sure. Right? And there are men out there that are that way. There are yes. men that are just that way. I, I like to put it this way. Um, it's, it's, and there are women out there that are that way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, the more you, better you, buy the more me. you spend, the more you buy me, the more, mm. the more I'll give you. Didn't you mention one time that, you know, women had like this rule that, you know, you take me out three times and spend this much on those dinners. Yeah, and then I'll sleep with you. <laughs> women have, women, a lot of women have a three-time rule. Yep. But I, I want to say, you know, I changed the rule that if I... If I if I'm going out with some when I was doing like internet dating, mm-hmm. if I went out with someone I liked, I would let him pay because I liked him. If I didn't like him, I would immediately pick up the bill. Ooh, and that <laughs> that was the indicator right there. <laughs> she didn't like so. If you're one of those like guys, paying, I don't do <laughs> if no if she paid, <laughs> wow. I changed those rules. That's awesome. Wow. And then I also used to feel, uh, you know, this is this is because of me who I am. It's not. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's, it's universal, but I used to feel like I have so much to offer. Even if I'm just sitting across the table from you, you better pay because I'm entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love you. <laughs> so, I just like I changed those rules. For That's myself. hilarious. I made them my yeah. own. Well, I never it's great. Felt pressure. And that that kind of lends us to our next topic. But 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 before we move on from that, I want to say this: um, when it comes to when it comes to pressure. Right. There are a couple of ways that you can dispel that pressure. And one of the ways is through something called safety, like being a safe space for people, yeah. mm. being a safe space for a woman, especially mm. um, or your beloved, your partner it could be male, female, whatever. But if you're a safe space for that person, then that pressure seems to it will, will be alleviated. And there are a couple of ways that we're going to talk about in a little while how to do that. You've already mentioned it. I'm not going to give it away. But the next piece here. Yeah, yeah, you did. The next piece here. <laughs> you roll with it. That that we want to talk about is what Lori's talking about, and that is sovereignty, mm. right? And how that shows up, um, allowing each person to hold their sovereignty. This really dispels pressure. I you I don't have to change for you. You don't have to change for me, and I don't have to give anything up, and you don't have to give anything up. And I like to say it this way: What do you bring into the party? Mm. Right? I've I've given this allegory so many or this it's just an example but you know when you go to a friend's house to a party and you knock on the door you know are you the guy that's standing there and when they open the door you're like hey what's going on you high five them and you walk through you're so glad to see everybody but are, are you that guy or are you the guy who you know when they open the door you're like hey man and you're handing over 12 packs and you're bring like all this stuff you're bringing with you you got the chips and the salsa and, and you're high-fiving are you that guy or are you the guy that just shows up expecting something? No, wait a minute. No. I want you to be the guy who shows up with something. So so I was brought up. Mm-hmm. I was brought up to never go to anybody's house without something. Right. Never go so empty handed. But I'm not bringing all the chips and all the salt. No. And I'm not bringing a 12 pack and everything else. But I am bringing a bottle of wine. Because that's the least I could do. And depending upon who it is, I might bring a bouquet of flowers. Yeah. Because my mother brought me up to contribute to people like I and I feel good about that. Right. Well, and, and what I mean here is not in the sense of um, you're actually showing up to somebody's house. What I'm saying is in this relating, mm-hmm. you're showing up with something. 
Oh, yeah. You're not yeah. just showing up trying to get. So, men, we go out to a bar to, a bar to get laid. We go out to get. So do women. Well, let me finish. Let me finish my allegory here. Okay. Men go out to get laid. Mm-hmm. How often do men go out to give pleasure? That's what I wonder. No, it's, they suck at that. When I when <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When uh they don't care. When I was when when like I, when I was legit single going out and doing all this other stuff, um and I found I discovered this idea of going from being somebody who's just going out to get to going out to be someone who was out to give, give a good time, have fun, be open to whatever happens, like no yeah. pressure. You and, told me you used to go around the bar and meet everyone, and they would say, I, "You'd say I'm yeah. Mike G," and they would all go, they would all go, "Oh, Mike G, <laughs> Mike, Mike G. G, come on back, have a drink with us, Mike uh, G." Like you told me that you would introduce yeah. yourself to everybody. It was called. It was. It was actually. It was something I learned from this guy named Brent Smith, and he said, "Be the mayor." The mayor kisses all the babies. The mayor shakes hands with everybody. How are you doing? So I would go around the bar, and this is fun to do. I would go around the bar, and I would meet everybody. And I would say silly things like, hey, listen, great drinks at the bar. Go ahead and talk to so-and-so. They got you covered. And people would actually think I was the owner of the bar. (laughs) I wasn't the owner of the bar. I was just so, like so friendly and I was there I was there to be the mayor and have a great time and give other people the feeling like they belong that's how Marion Barry was I I hate to think about how he ended up well in (laughs) so many right that's something that really puts people at ease so again that safety factor that factor of being a feeling like um, I'm I'm not just there to get something because that's when people feel guarded yeah Yeah. right switch the switch flip the script like you're creepy yeah that's right So I I think that's something that to think about. Now, the sovereignty piece is super important. So, Lori, I'd like you to pick up on that piece right there and talk about sovereignty. What does it look like and how do you achieve it? Okay, sovereignty is I'm my own person. I'm unto myself. There are some things from the Talmud. If I am not for myself, then who will be? Um, If I am only for myself, then who will be for me? Mm. Like the Talmud asks that. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the ancient scripts. The point about being sovereign is knowing that I am in my sovereignty. I'm whole and complete. I'm fine within myself. Mm -hmm. I don't need you out there. I don't need anybody out there. But I've done the work to feel complete in myself. I've done the emotional release to get rid of the holes and the dents in myself and the pieces that I couldn't be with. Mm. And now I can be with everything in me, and I don't need you to to verify me. I don't need you to... Like uh, validate to me. To validate yeah. me. I don't need you to, to make me worthwhile. I am worthwhile as a sovereign being. I get to choose my yeses. I get to choose my noes. I don't feel any pressure. I only feel what I feel in the moment mm-hmm. because I'm present. So this is dovetailing off of what we talked about in the last show. And it's also saying I did some work. It, I didn't get here just, boom, I was born and I'm sovereign. No. I did the work that it took to, to exercise my demons and to, to self-evaluate as such that I'm whole and complete and I like myself mm. and I love myself and I don't need to do anything to perform for you, whoever you are. Mm. I only do what I want to do. And that's different because I was brought up as a people pleaser mm. and mm. I rebelled against that and then I was a people rebeller, you know, or, <laughs> or repeller. Right. And then I found my way to the middle. But so this is where I'm going to stop you because yeah. in this next section yeah. after the break, um, we get to talk about how to how to set yourself up as sovereign and how to help others become that. So okay, great. Give but us. I'm just saying that's who I yes. was. Yes. I took care of everybody, and I was exhausted. Mm. I took care of you if I was going out with you. I took care of everyone else. You were tired of me taking care of them. Yep. Like. Forget about it. I, I don't, I'm sovereign. I don't have to do that. There's no pressure to do any of that. Yeah. Thank you, Lance. That's wonderful. Thank you, Lance. Yeah. 
All right. Well, let's take a break. So we're going to take a break. So if you just tuned in to us, you're listening to Laurie Handler's Academy for Men and Tribal Fire Podcast plus Sex and Happiness Radio Show Podcast, whatever you want to call us. (laughs) And we're talking about your sex and your happiness. Are you kidding me? We're still talking about that. (laughs) I'm always going to be talking about that. (laughs) And I have my colleagues here to talk about it with me, which makes it even better. We'll see you right after the break. Stay tuned. Did you ever stop to think that love is your birthright? That you don't need to earn it or prove it. You just need to live it. I'm personally inviting you to the path of true love, power, and freedom. If you're ready to enliven your soul through conscious sexuality and dive deeply into profound ritual that frees your heart, I'm inviting you to join us for the spiritual sexual shamanic experience. This is better known to most of you as the ISTA Level 1 training. I am regularly leading these courses along with a team of accomplished facilitators all around the world. As a matter of fact, these trainings have taken place in 34 countries. For information on when I'm leading, go to ButterflyWorkshops.com. Or for a full schedule, you can go to SchoolofTempleArts.org. Please consider this invitation seriously because love and freedom are your natural state of being. Are you wondering what book to read to jumpstart your life? Get the best from relationships? Attain the deepest feelings of intimacy? Do you want the best sex along with great happiness? Get your copy of Sex and Happiness, The Tantric Laws of Intimacy by Lori Handlers right now. You'll learn how to make love in the unknown Take the performance anxiety and reaching a goal out of sex. You'll learn subtle ways of communication and really important practices to empower you when dealing with an intimate partner. You'll let go of blame and struggle. Doesn't this sound great? Sex and happiness puts the innocence back into sex and gives Tantra the respect it deserves. Take charge of your life physically emotionally and spiritually with Sex and Happiness by Lori Handlers, only nineteen ninety nine paperback and fourteen ninety nine ebook. Order your copy today by going to butterflyworkshops.com. That's butterflyworkshops.com for your copy of Sex and Happiness. My question for people right now is if you're a woman who could use a little zest and zing in your arousal response, or maybe you know women or a woman who could use this, Because many women say that their feelings of desire, arousal, and sexual satisfaction don't happen as naturally or as often as they'd like. So I want to tell you about Zestra, because Zestra was developed to meet this much-needed option for women. Uh, Zestra is safe and a patented blend of botanical oils and extracts, and it's created to help women have increased sexual sensations. Zestra comes in convenient single-dose personal packets. Each packet keeps the essential arousal oils and extracts free, fresh, and safe from light. And with application of Zestra, it starts to work within three to five minutes. And at about 10 minutes, there's something called the Zestra Rush. And that can last up to about 45 minutes. The great news is that Zestra can be used as frequently as you like during each sexual experience. Now, I'm somebody who believes that all women deserve sexual satisfaction. That's why I do this show, in case you hadn't noticed. So I believe that men and women deserve sexual satisfaction. So if you're a woman who isn't getting that kind of arousal response that you want, please call 877-426-8047. That's 877-426-8047. And please remember to say you heard about Zestra from Laurie Handler's on the Sex and Happiness Show. All right, we're back, and we're talking about pressure, sovereignty, and what was the third thing? Safety. Oh, and safety is so important. So we're talking about that, pressure, sovereignty, and safety. All right, yeah. Lance? Yeah, well, no, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, because I know I've run into this in, in my life and in my experience, the... Um, what are you doing? I'm moving here. Wait a minute. Oh, hold I on. I can start over again. She's not. 
She's not picking up as loud she's, on the... Oh. She's a lady. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Lance. I'm sorry to do that. No worries. Don't worry about it. You wanna, you start wanna from, like, cut. And start over. So, yeah. So, what I, what I wanted to kind of bring it back to, because I have, like, like, some personal experience with this, is the all the, the sovereignty piece. I get what you're saying, and I agree with you. Um, but there's people out there that see that as a sense of selfishness in the world like having just with some of the language mm. and i've received this this feedback. really yeah so i don't know i it, it hit me to, to to go there with it okay and to talk about it a little bit and maybe see what you had to say about that i don't agree i don't because what it tells me is that they're just missing their own sovereignty yeah and they're proje- obviously projecting outside themselves yeah. onto other people um which makes sense, but also maybe how do you how do you actually speak to somebody about that and share with them maybe a path or where how they could get into that place of sovereignty? Like I know you mentioned about okay. release, things like that. So I'm going to talk. I actually, what I'm thinking of is uh, to talk about something that happened in my last is to level two. Mm. Yeah. Where we were doing something called the cross, which in the cross there's a masculine, feminine, dark, and light. Mm-hmm. And I was sitting as a, an oracle or the transmission of the light feminine, and women were coming to me and saying, like, how can I trust? I hate men. They've been, they've been so bad to me. So I don't want to describe the whole scene because that's part of the workshop yeah. or part of the... Uh, the initiation, which is a week long, but I will talk about this. I said to these women, each one, a, a, a myriad of women came to me while I was sitting in the light feminine. So I was like sitting where uh, Mother Mary would sit. Mm-hmm. I was sitting where uh, Mother Teresa would sit, with light mm-hmm. feminine. I was sitting where uh, possibly Joan of Arc would sit, you know, mm-hmm. women in the light side of a spectrum for spirituality, etc. And they came to me and they said, how can I ever trust? I don't trust any man. What should I do? And I looked at each one of them. I had tears in my eyes and I said, this tells me that one, you don't speak your truth fast enough, means you don't set a boundary fast enough. You don't say no when it's time to say no. And you don't say yes when it's time to say yes. And you're sort of maybe mamby-pamby, and therefore you think you've been taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. So you don't speak up fast enough, and you're blaming that on men. And two, if you would speak up fast enough and you would have your boundaries, then you'd be able to just love with your heart fully open in the light feminine. You'd be able to just love unconditionally like Mother Teresa, like Mother Mary, You'd be able to just love, and but you can't just love because you're suspect, because you are suspect. Right. You're not setting your own boundaries. You're not keeping your own boundaries. And therefore, you're saying you distrust men. But if you had a boundary and you could keep it, then you could also keep your heart wide open. Mm. Right. And you could just love whoever comes in your presence without blame, without shame, without anything. And I, that, for me, sitting in that quadrant was the biggest lesson I ever got. Wow. Like, right. I couldn't even believe I was saying that. Right. But that's where I am. Yeah. I'm like, yes, no, there's no maybes. Right. If there's a maybe, I know it's a no until further notice. And I'm able to have my heart wide open. I got no blame about anybody or anything even past hurts, even past things that I held on to, nothing. Right. And that's true. And that's true going through the emotional release. I, re- that, I let you know, it all go. Let it all go. Yeah. So you came back to your own sovereignty. So there's no more projection of like what those women were asking. So or he did this to me or they are doing this in the world. No, right. no, right. no one's doing anything to me. I speak my truth and then I can keep my heart open. Right. Mm. Awesome. I wasn't expecting that example. That was I wasn't beautiful. expecting it either. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. That's amazing. It's amazing. That's a perfect and example. Like the, really? Yeah. 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 Because they came to me crying yeah. because they yeah. want to love. Yeah. And they and they're so yeah. mad. 
And when you're so mad at the past, at men, starting with your father or your grandfather, yeah. then starting with your first love, your second love, whatever. Yeah, I, I have my heart been broken? Yeah. I've been cheated on? Yeah. Has people lied to me? Yeah. I have, you know, everything that ever happened to them happened to me. Sure. Not to mention the president of the United States being an asshole. Not to mention all the, you know, not to mention the, the, the other stuff. Not to mention the men that are out there as role models who like role model nothing. Right. Um, mm. But I finally have come to a place where I've done the emotional release. I've let go of all the charge that I have about men in the past, including my father. And now I'm in a place where I see that if I say no fast enough to something I really don't want, I can keep my heart open. Mm -hmm. I don't have to, like, withdraw, withhold, get feisty, be cunty. I don't have to be like that. I can just keep my heart open. It's like the divine masculine holding space without judgment. I can be the divine feminine loving without judgment, mm. just loving yeah. without judgment. And I know that I can trust my no, because when I mean no, I mean it. Right. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. So beautiful. <laughs> so beautiful. And it is one of, it's one of the things I love about you. <laughs> yes. Me too. It, there's, this, there's this thing about uh, what I, I maybe just add on to that is a, a, a lot of people can't handle hearing no. Like mm. they don't know what it's like to actually get a no for similar reasons that you're, that, of your example. That right. whole thing of the women asking, like, how do I trust? Well, it's like, you need your no. Yeah. You've got to be able to trust your own no. Right. And they don't have theirs, so how can yeah. they... Well, and that's part of the, that's the part of sovereignty, which is I have a voice. Yeah. So sovereignty can be whittled down to I have a voice mm -hmm. and I know how to use it. Right. And, and I matter. And I matter. And so do you. And at the same time, I trust my yes. I trust my no. Right. If I give you a no, it's a no. If I give you a yes, it's a yes. And you will know that what I've said to you is, is if for a lack of a better reason or a better, better way of saying it, is trustworthy. It's your truth. I yeah. can say my truth and that person will get my truth. And that's important because when you talk about your sovereignty and who you are as a human being, these are things you've got to kind of, like you said, do the inner work. It's an inside job. Yeah. It's very much an inside job. Yeah. And so um, when you get around people who are very wishy-washy about their word, they don't know what, to, you know, they don't, they don't necessarily give you the yes and no. I right? don't want to be with them. Well, it's, it's, well, they're all around you, yeah. but <laughs> the, whole world, the, whole world is, the whole world is there. Into I'm like, day. is that a yes? Yeah. yeah. Or is that a no? <laughs> or you ask a question and you get something other than a yes and a no. Yeah. Right? This is a yes or no. You get splaining on me. <laughs> I don't want no splaining. Don't be splaining on me. I don't want any splaining. <laughs> Lucy? Or they, or they answer, you got a lot of splaining to do. No splaining. <laughs> splaining to do. They answer you with another question. Correct. Oh. Or, or they start to tell you a story yeah, they give you a that story. has nothing to do with the answer to the question, right? And um, it's almost like you're talking to somebody who's like running for office. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly. <Right. laughs> But this is where this is where sovereignty really starts to take form in a person's life. Mm -hmm. And that form that we've decided that it's, it's kind of like we've taken our own uh, personal constitution and our declaration of independence. And we are able to live that out in our own lives mm -hmm. around the worlds of sensuality and sexuality, which can be very murky. It can be very gray area. You know, a lot of the times it's not black and white, which is OK. There's some. You know, there are 50 shades of gray <laughs> in your world. <laughs> but uh, but when it comes to when it comes to sovereignty, we got to talk about consent. Yeah. Consent is probably the biggest yeah. piece, I think, that's missing. But but we're trained. The thing it, is, we didn't get this from our parents. My parents never used the word boundaries. Mm -mm. How many people's parents use the word boundaries when you were growing up? Not mine. Uh, if you raise nope. your hand, you're in the you're so in the minority. I don't even recognize you. <laughs> That's one. Like, where did you grow up? Disneyland. Two. Yeah. Um, we're the three of us are really well trained mammals. You know, like we went and got training. Mm -hmm. We've done various multiple trainings. 
whether it's the Landmark Forum, whether it's Alison Armstrong, whether it's ISTA, whether it's Bliss and Ecstasy, we've done the work. So if you're listening to the show and you're going like, what the hell are they talking about? <laughs> you know, because you could be just going like, duh, who are these people? Right. They're saying no and yes, and they're saying, you know, no pressure. They're saying what... You haven't done the work. If you're if you're sitting there with a question mark over your head, you need to come to something to begin to do the work so you can feel the freedom that we feel and the ability to feel the pleasure that we feel because we know that when we go for the pleasure, we've already been through it. We know how to say no. We know how to say 10, too much, yep. too we, much, yep. nine, it's coming upon a red, stop. Right. And we're not afraid to say it. Absolutely. 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 It so takes I, practice. It takes practice. It takes work. Yeah. To get there, to be able to use your no in that way, you know? So, as an action point or as an action, action step, item, as yeah. an action item, if you will, yeah. um, in, 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 in declaring your own sovereignty, Lori, you, you, you really you spelled it out very clearly. And the action step is to get yourself trained. If you have no idea what we're talking about, get yourself some kind of information. Look up ISTA online. Look up uh, Bliss. Go to LoriHandlers.com, TheAcademyForMen.com. These are a couple places you can go to get reference points for this. Um, also have a, an incredible uh, connection to a whole world through that. And Lori, you were going to say something. Yeah. You need to make an investment in yourself. Thank you. I'm yes. sorry, but yeah. these things cost us money and they're going to cost you money. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, you're buying that new pair of shoes and that new, whatever that new quaff that you're getting your nails done, uh, invest the same kind of money in your own human development and training, because this is where you're going to find uh, how to make yourself happy mm. and happiness and joy are an inside job the same way as safety is, but we're going to come to that. Yeah. <laughs> do, do we take a break here before we go on to safety? Sure. I want to, I want to, I want to give, no, a, not yet. Hold on. I want to give everybody a, a quick exercise that I used to do for myself. Oh, thank um, you. But the, the, like discovering what it feels like to say no and then discovering what it feels like to say yes. So, Quick example, I remember the first time I was at a workshop and I had to make somebody believe that I meant no. And there's so much more to it than just actually saying the word, like feeling it in your body and actually giving off that energy of no, like no, I mean no. And I lost my voice. These people were laughing at me, right? I did. I, mean, I might be exaggerating, but they, they were smiling. <laughs> and I'm trying to get, I'm like, no, get the fuck away from me. Anyway, so that's how this started. I had the same experience. Yeah, it's really interesting. And <laughs> I yelled. I yelled my head off. <laughs> and they didn't even get it. They, they're just looking at me like, I don't believe you. And right. it's like, what do you mean? No. <laughs> no. It is craziness. So what I did, and you can do this at home. That's why I'm giving this to you. So if you're listening to this, after you stop and we're done, then you go into your bathroom and you look in the mirror. Look into your own eyes. Look into your, what would be your left eye, because you're in the mirror, and just start saying no to yourself and see how it feels and get through the giggles and get through the this is ridiculous and this is stupid because that's all the stuff that's telling you to not get your own sovereignty back. That's all the surface shit that's in the way, which is why you don't have your sovereignty in the first place. So get through that stuff. Until you feel comfortable saying the word no to your own face. And then do yes. Mm. And see what that feels like. Maybe is a no. So don't even do maybe. Just do no and yes. And do it in the mirror and see what it feels like. See what your face looks like when you Maybe in our face. world. Yep. Maybe in our world is no. Maybe in our world is no. Right. So yep. Take that one on and try that one. Maybe, maybe actually means no until further notice. Yes. No until further notice. Yep. So that, that's my that's my little exercise. That's great, for you to Lance. Take home. Thank you, Lance. I did it, and it works, and it helped me to maybe on the third try get people to, sit, to stop. And go so away. good, so <laughs> good. Of, instead of the tenth or fifteenth or or twentieth, you know. <laughs> anyway. All right, so we're going to take a break here, and when we come back, we're going to talk about safety. Mm. What does that even mean? Okay, we'll be right back. This is uh, Laurie Handlers for the Academy for Men the Tribal Fire podcast, 
and sex and happiness. Yay. Yay. We'll be right back. So many times you've heard Lori talk about emotional release on this show. She says over and over again how important it is for you and your loved ones. Now you can do emotional release in the privacy of your own home. And you can practice Lottie Han too, meditation that prepares you for making love in the unknown. In her CD, Shamanic Release and Lottie Han, she creates a safe and sacred space in which you can do the powerful work Lori is known for in her Butterfly Workshops courses. Lori sets you up with the proper positioning and breathing. Then she guides you through each emotional state to the beat of tribal African rhythms. This CD actually provides an easy way to do emotional clearing work on a regular basis. Order your copy of Shamanic Release and Lottie Han today and watch your relationships walk free of emotional baggage. To order your copy, go to ButterflyWorkshops.com right now. As a sex and happiness coach... I understand that increased sexual participation intensifies sexual responsiveness and desire, as well as overall health and well-being. My experience with a Sibian has personally increased my sexual response, and I can now train women to use this machine to have peak orgasms as often as possible. I strongly believe this will add to their health and well-being whether they have a partner or not. The beauty and the miracle of the human body is that it adapts and changes much more rapidly than people change their beliefs or their opinions. The Sibian can make any woman's body more resilient with each peak orgasm. Sibian is an amazing experience often described as the Lamborghini of sex toys. If you're a woman and you can get yourself to look at Sibian, you should do so. It won't take away from your partner. It will only add. Trust me on this. I love my Sibian. Go to Sibian.com. That's S-Y-B-I-A-N dot com. Or call 1-800-253-6135. That's 800-253-6135. 6135 and say Lori Handler has told you about Sibian. And by the way, if you do have a partner, ask about Venus for Men. That's Venus, V E N U S, for men. Okay, we're back. And uh, in this part of our podcast, we're going to talk about safety. What the hell is that? You know, everyone feel they come into these workshops. I do all these workshops all around the world, and they come and they go, I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe. What the hell is that? I don't feel safe. Like, what is that in the world that we live in today? Mm-hmm. Where did that mm-hmm. come from? Why is it like that? And what can we do about it? Mm-hmm. Who wants to go first? I'll take this one first. (laughs) I I have a lot of experience. I've actually had, this is sad to say, but I've actually had women run away from me, out, run, out, run away from me, run out the front door of the bar, (laughs) literally to their car and drive away. Like, cause I was just, hi, how are you doing? They were, they didn't feel safe. Um, and part of it was energetic. (laughs) Are you creepy? I'm seriously creepy. Um, But let me, but let me, let me also, let me recover. <laughs> like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, you yeah. Are not I'm creepy. so creepy. I'm not so creepy. not creepy. Um, so what's, <laughs> what that was when I was go when, when that was happening, when I was that person, right? When I was the person who could, uh, drive a woman from, from a perfectly good bar. <laughs> from a perfectly good martini. From a perfectly good time. <laughs> um, and, and what that was, was I was, I was not communicating energetically and and bodily my desire. So if I had a desire for a woman, I would pen it up and I would be polite and nice and all those, which you should do. You should always be polite and nice. Nice guys like that are creepy. But exactly. See, I was always polite and nice, but I was hold or I was, I was, you were harboring. I was hard. I was, I was, I had a hidden agenda. Yeah. I had a little something in my pocket here. It was probably not like I wasn't being upfront about my desire with a woman. And when I got clear that I could have a desire and that I could be a man desiring a woman and I could be clear about that desire without being creepy and allow that to be energetic rather than what I said. So I wouldn't say 
say to her, oh, I'm so turned on by you, baby, blah, blah, blah. But rather, I would look, her, look at her in the eye, and I would begin to be present with her, and I would start to ask her questions about herself. Who are you? Who are you in this world? And find out a little bit more about that person. So rather than trying to find out what kind of panties she was wearing, I was trying to find out what kind of life she was living. And I was interested, but I still had that desire. Believe you me, still I still wanted love to know about her panties. I, I don't still wear like them. Panties. It's too bad. Lori doesn't wear panties. <laughs> I, <love it>. so, <laughs> I hate panties. <laughs> The, 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 the goal, the, my purpose for saying this is because it's sometimes it's not, you're not aware that you're actually being creepy. You're not aware that you're hiding your real intention or maybe your desire and you feel ashamed of having the desire or ashamed right. of having the attention. Shame. Shame is what causes us as men to feel creepy. Now, one of the things that I do with women is I will actually say to them, I'll say, listen, I apologize. Sometimes I get nervous around beautiful women and it comes across a little creepy because I want you to like me, but just know that I'm just a little nervous around you. Right. I know you said that to Alexa Martinez on her podcast. Stop. <laughs> Busted. 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 <laughs> I, was, Remember, I cracked I, I, up. I say that to Alexa. Martinez Absolutely. On the podcast She's too. so adorable. And it was and it was Super true. Cute. It was true. I meant it. <laughs> She's so cute. And, anyway. And, but I've said that to more more women than just Alexa, Alexa Martinez. Right. Okay. So um but but the plug plug is, for Alexa Martinez kaleidoscope. Oh yeah. Uh big plug for for the kaleidoscope. I'm gonna and what tell she her does. that we mentioned And Jordan her. and, and yeah, we Alexa love you. And Jordan. Um okay. we appreciate you. And uh, all the work that you do. And but this is where I'm what I'm trying to get at is that, that men, you have to understand something, your desire. You got to be upfront about it. You got to be real and, and actually feel it and not try to push it behind you or try to hide it in your pocket or stuff it away. It, because what happens is that becomes a hidden agenda. It goes and women sideways. Women can experience that. They feel it. They, they know intuitively that you're up to something. You're trying to. Why do you think women are always saying men are trying to get in their panties? Because men are trying to get in their panties. Like, that's a fact. But if men were just saying, I want to get in your panties, then they could go, yes, no, that's it. I'm sovereign, right. yes or no. Yes or no. Trying to makes it be sideways. Mm. And then the woman is like, oh. It's manipulative. Oh. It's, you know, it is. It's, it's And women coercive. get afraid. Yeah. It, it's what drives part of the Me Too movement because yeah. we're not being honest about it. And, and at the same time, if I if I'm honest about my desire for a woman and she says no, thank you, I've not violated her. Yeah. Like I haven't. I've I've said you know I'm interested in you. I'm very. I think you're very this that or the other. You're a sexy woman. I'd like to get to know you a little better. Um, who knows? Maybe we could get together for coffee. Whatever. That kind of thing right there. If I'm honest about my desire, she's not going to feel like I'm I'm hiding myself. Like I've got no hidden agenda. And if she says no, thank you, then I can say well, thank you. So you're saying that creates safety. It does. Okay, good. I say safety is an inside job. It is. So I say that women need to do the work to find their inner masculine. When they do the work to find their inner masculine and they find that there's a sword <laughs> that goes up and down their spine yeah. and they can draw the sword anytime they want and put it back in the sheath that goes down their spine, that the safety that they desire someone else to provide for them becomes their inner provision, something that they can provide themselves because they have found their masculine that wants to protect and wants to hold space without judgment. And they, they found that inside themselves. So it's both end. It's you talking about what men are about when men get creepy and they don't dis divulge their desire. And then it's Women who who are receiving the communication and who is their responsibility to be safe. Safety, like I walk down the streets in New York City. I walk down the streets in any city, anywhere. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, you know, I don't like ask for trouble. I, I did. There was a time. <laughs> <in my life. laughs> there was a time in my life where I asked for trouble, and luckily, trouble didn't find me too much. Yeah. Um. I'm not an afraid person. I feel safe. 
I could get scared of certain things, but I basically feel safe. And so I could go down the street in any city anywhere and feel safe yeah. because my safety is inside. If I don't feel safe, I don't go out. Right. You know, something that, that, um, that I got to experience, um, I've done quite a bit of work with, with Alison Armstrong. Right. And, um, so what I'm about to share is something I got in one of her, um, her workshops and um it was this so she she went through and she asked men first you know how many of you men have um felt um you know uh fear fear for your life like you feared for your life let's say in the last year you know a handful of men a pretty good size Hardly. actually really it was a, it was a good group of men i wouldn't say half but a good group of men number of men raised their hands and um and and then she said you know how about in the last 6 months and less hands went up how about the last 3 months and you know the the hands began to whittle down and then she said you know how about the last week you know and almost no hands went but up but all the women's hands went up well let me tell the story <laughs> i know that it did i know in advance so so here's what but for the benefit of the listener <laughs> the 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 opposite was true of women and and you probably already alluded but here was what was really interesting is that she said the same thing in reverse you know she said how many of you women have and have had um you know in the last year felt like you were you know feared for your life almost a hundred percent of the hands went up mm -hmm. last six months still a huge huge number of women's hands went up last month the last week, the last 24 hours, in the last hour, women's hands were still going up. For, for the most part, I want men to get this. For the most part, women don't feel safe. It's just culturally. It's just like that. It's just like that. Yeah. That's, that's the opportunity I extend to you is to help women feel safe. Not just feel safe. But how about this, that they actually are safe. They're safe around you. They're safe by the fact that you're in the room, right? They're safe. And they can, you can actually help women be that and feel that um, through your energy, through being congruent with your desire and allowing yourself to be honest in every way in that scenario. And for women, you should know that there are knights and heroes uh, in in our world. Yeah. And there are men who, like Lance and I, who are for you. And we 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 love you. We want you to be safe. So and that's so, what Lance. That's how Lance opened. Mm -hmm. He gave that woman space. Yeah. yeah. To be who she was in that in that process yeah, in that moment yeah yeah, yeah. and how did how did it turn out for her oh it was great it was great there was th there, there was actually three uh it was three stations right so we went to mm -hmm. three different places and the second woman they had the same thing happen but hers was a little bit different um but it was very similar it was why do i feel this way why do i ha why do i feel like i have to engage but she wanted to engage like she was like I want to. The first one didn't want to, but felt like she had to. The this second one, one felt like she had to second, and wanted to. Yes. It was, it was, mm. it was interesting. It was really trippy. <laughs> really trippy like me. what's a man to do? Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> what am I going to do here? Men are so confused these days. It, navigate that one. Yeah. Men, are, <laughs> yeah, men don't, we, I we give mixed I messages. It. I totally navigated it and I held space for both of them. And yeah. It different. It was a different type of space, but I did it. But I, I, I want to go back to what, the the safety the inside job thing, yeah and yeah the the piece about creating safety like in the example you gave yeah me, talking to women at a bar I feel like I feel like that that creepiness that mm. that sidewaysness that you were talking about is is more of a internal presence factor for men yeah like actually having presence about who they are and what they're fucking doing in the good, world good good yeah. right that's good and it's and Yes, it does create an external safety space, and it doesn't create an external safety space, but because I agree with the safety as an inside job piece. Mm -hmm. And it's also safety for the men, but it's actually them not feeling safe in themselves because they can't right. express who they really authentically are, which is having desire. Yeah. So it's still an inside job for them in that in that same place. Right. So it it's like Lori says both and and both. Yeah. 
Well, it's, it's, it's crazy. yes. We need look. We need both. I'm not. I'm not it's shortcoming it. Yeah. Yeah. We need women to feel safe within themselves, right. and we need men to provide that nightly Absolutely. safety. Yeah. Absolutely. But we, and women have the night inside of them, and men have the night inside of them. Right. Yeah. And we each of us have to provide it for our individual selves, and we have to provide it for each other. Hopefully, like, I want to yeah. feel safe with a woman. Like, I've been around women that I don't feel safe with. Right. And, it, I mean, it's true. It can go both ways. Isn't it interesting, though, because I feel like that in, in those situations, you're dealing with someone who's incongruent. Yeah. You're dealing with someone who's got a hidden agenda or maybe a got they've got a something, whatever yeah. it is. I can't call it a hidden agenda, but they got a something that's just... They're not. They're it's not. a hidden agenda. And it's incongruent with what you're experiencing. So imagine having sex with a woman incongruent. Like you could tell she's incongruent. Mm-hmm. She said yes. Yeah. But there's I something. Can't. I can't anymore. Right. There's something about yeah. this yes that I'm not so sure about. I, with, with my current lover, I can't. Like <sighs> if she's a no, yep. even after what, two, three years almost? Yep. I know that yeah. she's a no. Like K-N-O. N-O. <laughs> right? Thanks, I Simon. love that. I mean, no. We should have a t-shirt. K-N-O. No. Yeah, no. And I can feel it. Total I, Simon move right keep there, going. bro. It's like, it's not, it yeah. doesn't feel right. And I got it. I stop, I check in, whatever it is. You know? Yeah, and the same thing for women. When, when, when women feel like they are, uh, they're saying yes, but there's something, there's a check, like in, uh, I've said, like a check in their body where they yeah. feel like, oh, I'm not so sure about, but they're saying yes, Maybe because they don't want to hurt the guy's feelings. They kind of like him, whatever. Look, again, sovereignty is a key to safety. It's one of many keys, right? That sovereign piece where you trust your own no and you trust your own yes, that allows you to be the kind of person that can say yes or no, and you know you're congruent, right? And the other person can feel safe there. Can I say something? Please get in with it. Become unfuckable with. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> uh, yes. yes. That's it. I mean, just I, you become know, unfuckable with. Become unfuckable with. Don't fuck with me. But not out of this angry, you know, peop, I'm just going to say this. People misconstrue the goddess Kali. Mm. Like, Kali mm. is unfuckable with. But people think there's so, some women are so angry. They go, I'm Kali. No, Kali's not angry at all. Kali just knows what to do. She knows how to destroy what needs to be destroyed. She knows how to destroy ego and pride. She knows how to rob people of the things that are creepy and weird. But Kali's not at all angry. She's not angry at all. She's just doing her job, which is to cut away the parts of ego and the parts of pride that don't serve. So become unfuckable with and be your truth mm. like just stand in your truth and no one really can mess with you no yeah. one and you're safe love that oh, that's good love that. i that's think this really is a good. place for us to end you yeah. think so <laughs> <laughs> and again we're talking yeah. about we, in the context of all of this that we've been we've been talking about this in in all of this we started in our last podcast about talking about being Extraordinary lovers. This this is what's required. This is yeah. so important to it's understand, serious. right? In being an extraordinary lover, you've got to work this stuff out. And so, again, being someone who's sovereign, right? Yeah. You're not putting pressure on a person and you're not feeling pressured. Mm-hmm. You can say yes and you can say no. And then also someone who's congruent in, in the ability to make others feel safe and to be safe yourself. And, again, that's sovereignty. That's an Absolutely. inside job. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. So thank you. You want to go ahead and wrap us up, Lori? Yeah, wrap us. Um, what a great show. Tie, you want to tie us up? Show. This is a great show. I'm not tying you up. <laughs> this is a, I'll tie you both up. Uh-oh. I can tie your cocks up. I didn't bring all my rope. Wow. But I have, like, you can do it with shoelaces. I have, I, have some, I, have some, I have some great rope for that exact thing. <laughs> anyway, I'm not doing that now. I'm okay. wrapping up this show. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> So it's been my pleasure to be with Michael Gibson and Lance Cole, my beloved colleagues and sweet people that I work with and play with. And uh, this is Lori Handlers, and we're signing off for Lori Handlers Academy for Men, Tribal Fire Podcast, and Sex and Happiness. 
Thank you for listening. We couldn't do it without you. What would be the point? We hope that you're growing and learning from this, and there'll be more. This is only the beginning. Namaste. Thank you for joining us today for Sex and Happiness. To learn more about Lori and her work, please go to ButterflyWorkshops.com or follow her on Twitter or Facebook. You can send her an email at sexandhappiness at gmail.com. We'll see you again right here next week for another edition of Sex and Happiness. Oh,